Right, good morning everyone. Friday, end of the week. Good to see you. Obviously didn't have a live lesson yesterday as I was in school. Absolutely brilliant to see you. So I'm just going to put my iPad on mute. Um, it is 5-2, so we're going to be at the start of the lesson in five minutes. We'll find out who's won the challenge, the TikTok challenge, um, and we'll get started with some English writing uh, today. Okay. Um, and then obviously this afternoon we're going to be having our disco, but we're going to focus on English this morning. Once again, thanks for coming down. Five minutes to get started, so pen, papers, all you need. Make sure you got those, and we'll get started in five minutes. Give people a chance to come down and join the lesson. couple of minutes and we'll get started. Oh, 
Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome down. It's about, yeah, just went 10 o'clock. So we're going to get started with the lesson. Uh, as always, good morning everyone in the chat. Good morning the teachers as well. Mrs. Carthy, I've seen you there. I think Mrs. Cook, I've seen you there as well. Good morning, although you're only next door, so good morning anyway. Um, thanks very much for coming down. Last live lesson of the week and then we got our disco later on okay so on the fridays when we do our english lesson but it's going to be our creative writing lesson so we can really let our imaginations and our writing things come through okay Love it a lot more than our spag lessons at the start of the week good way to finish the week so um same as always we're going to have a writing task and then we're also going to look at the story that the story sorry that we are starting to write together okay we've only just started it so we haven't wrote any parts of it yet but that is going to start a change today. So this is going to be a really good lesson. Um, let's have a look there. So what we're going to be looking at first today is the Reading Plus TikTok Challenge. Now, this is for the children that go to my school. Obviously, if you're from another school, that's great. I might in future try and expand it out so more people can get involved. Um, but I set a challenge last week. If I can find it, okay. Yeah, I set a challenge last week. Um on reading plus i said from the year five versus the year six okay whoever read the most uh out of those two years whoever actually read the most whichever student read the most in the winning year would be able to pick a tiktok for me to recreate dance one a mean one or whatever it is obviously within reason but as always you make me look like a bit of an idiot i haven't got a tiktok account yet so i'll let you know what that is when we get set up and get started so a little bit of a drum roll. The winners out of year five and year six were, and Mrs. Carthy's going to be very happy about this, year five. Well done. There was lots of people that read. Now, um, let's have a look. I think year five read about 40,000, uh, sorry, year six read about 40,000 words. Yep, 40,105. And year five read 49,751. However, I'm going to change the competition a little bit, okay? Don't worry, though, I'm not cheating. Um, the two winners from each year, so whoever read the most in year five and year six, I'm going to let them choose a video each. So double bubble on them making me uh, look a little bit of an idiot. Like, I don't do it myself. Because um, there was two people who did really well, managed to get certificates because they got up to the next level and read absolutely loads, okay? Um, the first one in year five, who read the most out of everyone in year five and year six was Sophie Mulvaney. So well done, Sophie. And in year six, the one who read the most, and I could have guessed, as soon as I put this challenge, someone who always likes to make me look a little bit silly and take the mic was Leah. Well done, Leah. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. So I'll get in contact with you somehow, however I can. Um, you can get in contact on the Padlet. And we'll sort out which one it is that you want me to do. Have an example of probably best. So stay tuned for those on my channels next week. Um, quick um, couple of rules on the chat. Remember, um, keep it appropriate. It's for people to join in, give their ideas, chat and catch up every now and again, but don't distract people from the lesson. We've got teachers in there making sure everyone is uh, following those rules. Um, and as well as that, if you need any help or anything like that, you put it down in the comments, okay? So I'll mention that. Need any help? You've got my socials, Mr. Biggins123, and my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can get in contact if you need any help with anything. If you want to send me work, um, if you just want to say hello, tell us what you've been up to, they are there. You can get in contact on the Padlet, which the link is in the description below. That's where you will get the worksheets for after the lesson um, and the work, work for the full week on all the different subjects, all there. But you can get in contact on there. There's also an email address to send work in and get in contact with and um, lastly like i said in the comments if you really need help you're really struggling obviously if you're watching this um, lesson back and you're not live the comments is where i will be able to get in contact i have seen a couple of people um answering questions from the lessons while i'm asking on the comments because they're watching back just to let you know when you do that i'll not know what part of the video that you're referring to because it's not like the chat where it comes through as live okay so in the comment section if you write anything there you have to let me know what it is you're talking about uh, in there okay so let's get started so last week we may i mentioned that i want us to try and make a story together so all of us together okay because it's always good when you put your minds together you always get the best ideas share ideas your ideas evolve all those type of things so 
Um, what I did is I put a Kahoot up, okay, I put a quiz up, but it wasn't a quiz, it was more of a poll, more of a vote to see what type of story that we are going to write. And I checked the uh, the poll to see what story we're going to write, and we had to pick the genre, okay? So remember, a genre is a type of story. So the type of story that we are going to write, the one that won was a fantasy story. Now, it was a really close race, okay? But fantasy won by quite a few votes, okay? Everyone was really close, but fantasy was just a little bit ahead of a uh, few votes. So it's a fantasy story. So, um, remember the fantasy story. I'll, actually, I'll come back to that when we talk about what we're going to do with it. And we had to pick the characters, the protagonists. Um, protagonists. Okay, and we had a choice of different people. And the one that won, let's have a look. It was a brother and sister. Brother and sister. So we're going to be writing a fantasy story about a brother and sister. At the minute, that is all we know. We don't know any more about the story because this is all that we have decided. So your first task for this week and we're not going to do in the lesson because it's something I want you to think about. I want it to evolve. You might not send me into the middle of next week or something. OK. Just uh, what I want you to do is I want you to think of what type of story it could. Have. What could the plot of this story be? What could happen? OK, what's the start, the middle and the ending? So not writing the full story for me because we're going to be doing that together. I'm making a big story over a few weeks rather than just one. But what is the, the overview of the plot, like a summary, right? So this is what's going to happen. So if you're reading the back of the book and you're reading the synopsis or the blurb and it tells you what the story is about, OK? Like that, but obviously a blurb wouldn't spoil the end, wouldn't it? You can spoil the end and we need to spoil the end because we need to know how the story is going to end as well because we're going to be the ones writing it. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to send me in loads of great ideas for those plots. Now... There are a few things that you'll need to include, okay? Remember, firstly, a fantasy story is where something fantastical happens in a normal world. So, like, your Harry Potter, where it's um, a, a magical world and stuff, and it's happening in our real world, okay? Loads of different stories like that. Or we, in a fantasy story, you have it's a magical world, like language and the wardrobe and things like that. And the things that happen in there are normal for that world, but they would seem fantastical to us, if you understand me. So all the stuff that happens in the line, which in the wardrobe, the talking line, the talking animals, okay, the magic, the things, that's fantastical to us, but in that world, it's real, okay? So you can choose one or two of those things. And these are the things, when you're sending me your plot or your summary or whatever it is, however you want to put it, these are things to be think of. So a well-thought-out setting, okay? So have a think about it. Have a think of those uh, example of the line that was in the wardrobe, okay? Think of the world, how magnificent it is. How can you describe that? How can you sell me on that world? Or Hogwarts. How, think of all the different things you could do to describe that. So we need a well thought out setting, okay? You might want to pop these in the notes because we're going to be moving on to a, a real re uh, writing task for the lesson. Okay, this is just going to be something um, that you can send to me that we're going to use and hopefully our writing tasks in future will evolve from this. So well thought out setting. So setting is where the uh, story is set, obviously. Um, now, a fantasy story tends to focus on good versus bad. Now, it doesn't have to be a massive overarching big evil villain okay who's going to be in the story could just be someone who the uh, the brother and sister don't get on with okay or rivals or something like that but fant fantasy stories tend to be good versus bad okay harry potter versus voldemort um all the children versus the the white witch um i think lord of the rings the the order of the uh, the ring versus sauron and the wizards and all those things your star wars you've got your republic versus your sort of um the um, uh, empire sorry okay so you've got that good versus bad thing going through it doesn't have to be but if we're sticking to this genre we could put that in there as well and this is the main thing i'm going to double star this this is the main thing that i want you might want to, you need to tell me and uh, what's the build-up okay so how does the story start okay how do we find out about the characters what type of things are they doing um then there needs to be a dilemma now a dilemma is a problem okay something that they have to overcome okay it could be a challenge 
could be a war, could be saving people, could be lots of things. And then at the end, there is the resolution. Now, I'm going to write resolution because it doesn't have to be a happy ending. We can decide that later on. But what happens? What do you think could happen in the end? And then this is a, another double one. Could we have a great twist? I think really good stories have twists in them. Not all, there's really good stories without a twist in, or things that you don't find out, okay? Um, is there any way we can think of a really good twist, okay? Because there's a lot of us working together, I'm sure these things we can think of. So, you can send them to me on the Padlet, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. It can be bullet points. Um, and also, as well as that, you might have an idea for a really good sentence or a really good dialogue or a really good twist or a really good ending or something like that. You might not have all of these thought out. Okay, that's fine. There are a lot of us. Okay, so we have a quick look now. Nearly 100 people in this lesson at the minute. Okay, so if we put all our minds together, we can easily come up with a really good one. So what I'm going to do from these that you send me in, okay, these little plot summaries, these ideas for a story. Remember, you're not writing the story for me. This is just a little task. These are the ideas, okay? You can go as detailed if you want. If you really, really get excited and you've got loads of ideas, you can put them down. If you've got more than one idea, so, oh, I've got this idea and I like this idea, send them both in. That's fine, because what I'm going to do when you send these in, Okay, I'm going to mishmash them, okay, all together, all the good ideas, I'm going to magpie them, I'm going to take them, I'm going to put them together, and we're going to come up with a great idea for a story that we've all done. So I'm not just going to pick one person's, I'm going to pick ideas from lots of people's. So if you've just got an idea for a great setting or something like that, someone else might have told me all, the, all these, good, these good things here, but someone else has got a really good setting. Then another person's got a great twist, and then I use someone else as part of the twist, to change that great idea that we've got a little bit. And this is what you can do with your own work when you've got loads of ideas and how we should be doing. But what we're gonna do is use everyone's idea and bring them together to show people how it works when we're working together, but it's the same way we should be working when we're making our own story, okay? So that's gonna be our task because once we get this down and we've decided what story and what is gonna happen in the story, okay, then we can start doing writing tasks on this Okay, we know the story, we can start doing writing tasks on it, and our story will start to come together. Okay, so that is a little task to start off with this week. So there isn't a Kahoot or anything to go with it, because it's your ideas that I want. I want your ideas for a story. Could be two or three bullet points, could be one bullet point, could be a page worth of writing if you're getting really excited about it. It's completely up to you with that one. Okay, you might not have any ideas, that's fine. Come along to the next lesson next week and we'll have the ideas together, but you'll be able to add great writing to those ideas. So that's going to be the uh, the little task that I want you to do. I hope you understand that. I'll go back over it later. At the end of the lesson, if there's something you're not sure about this or something you want to ask, we'll obviously do it in the comments or all the other things that we have. I'll really look forward to looking at some of these ideas. But what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to our actual sort of real task for the lesson today. So today we are going to be doing a, a descriptive writing piece, a really descriptive writing piece. Now we're gonna do that, but what we're gonna do as we're going along is look at the steps that we are taking to make that piece of um, writing really, really good. And what I want you to do is as we're going, make notes of the things that we're doing, make note of the things that we're putting on the board, not just make uh, notes of the ideas that we're putting for this one, because we're gonna be coming up with a great piece of descriptive writing together, but your task will be to make another one in the same sort of way. So don't just put up notes of the ideas and things like that we're going to be using for our descriptive writing, put notes of how we did it. What are the things did we think about? Okay, what ideas did we have come and how did we come up with those ideas? Because that's what we're trying to learn here. Not how to write this piece of descriptive writing, but how to use it in all our pieces of writing. Okay, so making notes as we're going through, whatever helps you is brilliant. Obviously, as well, the lesson will be up afterwards so you can re watch different parts if you want to have a look at certain ones. So, we're gonna write a really descriptive piece of writing. And the most important, I would say, thing that we talk about, we talk about it a lot, I know all the teachers that are in the chat and all the teachers that I've met will teach this, is show versus tell, okay? Is show 
versus tell. So we have show and we have tell. Now we always want to show our audience and not tell them. If you've heard this before, you'll know what I'm saying. If you haven't, you'll be thinking, Mr. Biggins, what are you talking about? But that's okay, we're going to look at how we do that. Okay? Great writers, really good writers. Um, and this is this is something she'll tell. Like this is why this, this lesson I put on is from year four to year seven. It could be years before, years after, because it doesn't matter what level of writing you are at. You should be trying to do this, okay? If you're older, you can do it at a better level. If you're younger, you're just starting to learn it, okay? But it's always the best way to do it. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Great writers always show us things rather than tell us. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to put two uh, sentences up on the board, okay? Um, he was scared. Okay. And as I write these sentences up, what I want you to do is in the chat, tell me which sentence is better, but tell me why as well. Okay. So let me just say, or oh, one or two, tell me why you think it's better. Okay. And not just sort of, oh, well, this one shows this one tells, it shows you, you know what's worth. What is it in the sentences that you like, that you like as a reader better than the other one? Um, so first one is, he, he was scared. Our second one was... His heart started to beat faster in his chest as the hairs on his arms Stood up and a shiver coursed through his body. Okay, so you've got two sentences there. He was scared, and then we've got a second sentence. His heart started to beat faster in his chest as the hairs on his arms stood up and a shiver coursed through his body. Course there, okay, great word if you're not sure for if it's coursing, it means it's sort of going around your body and it's called course because it's following a course. So like a river courses down because it's got those banks on the side which means it's going. So a shiver's coursing down, it's going down our body, okay, it's being sent down. It's a great word there, course to use if you don't know it. So let's have a look at the examples in the chat why you think well, which one you think is better first, and why you think uh, each one is better. Okay, I'm just going to get Miss Carly's chat now. Okay, two, lots of people saying two, let's be fair, most people saying two, but we've got there, let's have a look at the ideas. Has more description in there, tells more what's happening. Um, it doesn't say he was scared, it shows different things that happen when you are scared. Well done, Millie. Um, Chloe, number two, it's more detailed. Uh, Myra, number two, give us some ideas. Uh, Isabel, it has a bit more description, makes it clear for the reader to understand what's happening. He was scared is telling the reader more than showing them, and um, it's descriptive. Sam thinks one, because it's quick and gets to the point. Um, two, because it's got more description. Lots of people say it in two. More description, it describes, gives more information, given, um, go to the, uh, the imagination, well done, uh, given more imagery there, Alfie, really well done. Has more description in there, one has a lack of detail, helps us imagine it, brilliant. So lots of people saying too, and lots of talking about the description, giving us more detail. That's absolutely fine, we have one person there, Sam, saying one because it's short and it gets to the point. Now. I'm glad no one put it to number two because it's longer, because longer sentences aren't always the best. Sometimes we need sharp and snappy sentences, okay? So Sam, when he said it's one because it's sharp and, short and snappy, is right in a way because in certain pieces of writing, okay, we need those short and snappy 
sentences, okay, they can add, if this was a for, uh, afterthought, or trying to create suspense, okay, that would be really good. However, if we had these sentences all the way through our work, it wouldn't be a good piece of writing. Probably quite low level, okay? Because children who are quite uh, a lot younger than you are could write these sentences. He was scared. He walked up to the, the castle. He was scared, okay? They can write those things, so it's a low level of writing. These here, people start to get onto it, start to not only give more description, people didn't really mention there, only one person actually talking about imagination and imagery, Okay, this puts us in what's happening. It tells us exactly how that, you can be scared in lots of different ways, can't you? Okay, this tells us exactly how he's scared. He's very scared, okay? You can be scared of, um, I don't know, scared of losing the game, but these things might not happen. This is a real, real fear, okay? You can see the person, the, the, um, the heart's beating fast, the hairs on the arms are sticking up. It creates that atmosphere, and that's why what the detail is there for, is to create atmosphere. We shouldn't be putting detail in just for the sake of it. We should be putting detail in to create pictures in people's minds and to be creating a feeling and an atmosphere in our writing. So when we said here, show rather than tell, we have two showing and number one telling. Okay. So number one tells us that the character is scared. Number two tells us that, the, lets us know the character is scared as well. If I said, hey, how's the character feeling? A lot of you, if I hadn't put that, would have said he's scared. <coughs> Sorry about that. But he hasn't actually said, we haven't said to the reader, the character's scared. We've showed them that they're scared by the things that are happening to them. The feelings, the thoughts, the things that are uh, happening to their body. Okay. So that is why it's called show versus tell. And this is why today we're going to focus on our show sentences and how we can make a really big piece of descriptive writing forward. So one of the great ways that we show people rather than tell them is to talk about the five senses, okay? The five senses uh, that people have, pop them in the chat, do you know them all? The five senses show us how people are feeling, okay? Five senses help us relate because we all have them, so we know what things look like, we know what things taste like and what things feel like um, and all those things. And because we can relate to them, we can imagine what's happening in the story better. So a great way, like I've said, is the five senses. And let's have a look in the chat to see whether you have got them all. Right. Got Millie there, it's got a lot of them in there. I'll put one of yours, Millie. You've got sight, okay, so the things that you can see. And um, Freya, what's one then that you've got in there? We've got touch, okay, so things that you can feel, okay. Um, da, da, da. Jasmine's got taste in there. Oh, who's the Stephen? We got smell there. Thank you, Stephen. And are we missing one? Can anyone see what it is? Do, do, do. See, we've got someone else get it. Well done, Ellie. Eleanor. That is Stephen. So, those are our five senses. A lot of you put them all down in your description. Really well done. So we have sight, we have touch, we have taste, things you can taste in your mouth, obviously, smell, things you can smell, and the things we can hear. And it links, if we link these to how the character is feeling as well, um, So if we link these to the thoughts and the feelings of the character, so how the character's feeling, and we link them all in, that is how we create great atmosphere and great creativity in our stories, okay? So if we just say he was scared, we're not creating a great atmosphere. We know what the, the, the character's feeling, but that's a book that's easy to put down. It's a story that's easy to put down. If we use all of these five senses, 
and ripple of forces and theories, we create those pictures in people's minds, we create that imagery, and that's the one thing that we want to do for people so they don't want to put our stories down. Okay, make them different from other people. So what we're going to do is in the lesson, we are going to take a simple sentence and we're going to work together to really, really improve it. Okay, we're going to use these things that we just talked about and show rather than tell. Okay, and then we use those skills later on in order to be able to do our own task at home. So the sentence that we're going to use is a simple sentence. Okay, really simple sentence. And we are going to have a look and see how we can make the sentence from a simple, just learn to write sentence into an amazing part of a story that people want to read on. And the sentence is, let's have a look what we've got to make it. Yeah. She walked to the fair. Simple sentence, could be in lots of different stories. Someone is going to the fair, okay? However, if I just had that, she walked to the fair, she got there, she went on this ride, she went on that ride, on that, on that ride, not read, sorry. I would just put that story down straight away. So we are gonna have to improve this. So we know what's happening. We know she wants the fair. Do we know how she feels? No, we don't, okay? So we need to know how she's going to feel in order for us to start to describe, describe this, okay? If we don't know how she feels, this walk could be different, couldn't it? You could be walking to the fair, but you could be being dragged along. You don't want to go. You want to do something else. You could be going to the fair, and it's the first time you've ever been. You could be going to the fair, but you're working at the fair, and you would have lots of different feelings from those things. So this simple sentence doesn't tell us enough. We don't know anything about the character and how we're getting on, Okay? So we need to know, and I'm going to put these on the side so we know as we're working through what it is. Now, the character that is walking to the fair, what I'm going to pick, I'm trying to pick one that's um, is going to be good for us to describe. Excitement and happiness. OK, so our character is going to be feeling excitement and happiness as they are walking to the fair. Now. Like I said, we're going to improve this, but we're going to, not going to add anything extra to the story. So we're not going to describe what happens when they get to the fair. We're not going to have a conversation in there and all those things just to add words. We are only going to have our character walking to the fair. So when we finish off, we're going to have a piece of writing and the two pieces of writing will have told us, told us the, the same thing. If I said to you, what's happening in that? You'll have said, oh, she's walked the fair. Okay, so this will be our summary of sort of what's happened there. It's not going to be she walked the fair and she did this and did that. So we're still going to keep the core idea the same to see how descriptive we can make one little sentence. Okay, so you'll see exactly what I mean as I go on. I wrote that in my notes there because I know sometimes it's hard to visualise things until we actually see them. So we're going to start working on this, okay? So we're going to have to think about the walk to the fair. OK, we're going to have to imagine that walk in our heads. OK, close your eyes. Think about walking to the fair, about the things that are going to be happening as we are walking. Now, as you close your eyes, there, I'm going to tell you it's one of these travelling fairs. So it's not one that's not like an Alton Towers or one that's at the seafront or anything like that. It's going to be one of these travelling fairs and it's in a field. So you're walking in a field to get to it. And also walking up a hill. So we're going to be walking up a hill in a field to get to this fair. And then when we get to the top of the fair, at the top of the hill, the fair is going to be on the other side, not the top of the hill, but on the other side, down our air at the, the bottom of the hill. Okay. Now, um, when we're story writers and we're trying to be really, really good story writers, we have to be picking everything for a reason. So let's go back to those two things that I've, I've just said there, water in a field and uphill. Now, the reason I've chose water in a field because I thought, right, where would fairs normally be? So rather than just starting to write things down, I started to think about in real life, where would they normally be? And there's a fair that comes to Newcastle called the Hoppings. Okay, it normally comes every year. It's a really big one and that's in a big field. So that's the one I envision when I put in. 
But what I also did as well is I put us going up a hill, and that might seem a little bit random, but I'm now trying to be a cleverer writer. And what I'm thinking is everything I do is for a reason. I'm not just thinking, oh, I'm just going to put a hill there, so she's walking up the hill. The reason I do that is because I can build anticipation, can't I? Because if she's at the base of the hill walking up, she's not going to be able to see the fair on the other side. So as she's going up, we can start to describe certain things. She can't see it, so there's one sense gone. But the sights, the uh, things she can hear, the anticipation, that anticipation, you know, of something that's about to happen. Okay, that's a really good feeling to, to get into. People have had that feeling and that will um, they relate to that one and they'll know what's going to happen. And it's a great feeling to create. Okay, you all know that uh, anticipation of something before it happens. Okay, sometimes especially with some, being a Sunderland fan, you get really excited for the match and you want to go, and you get there, and it's not as exciting as it was, but that anticipation building up is the really key thing there, okay? So I haven't just put a hill in for a reason. Everything that I choose in my story is there for a reason. I'm not just putting stuff in that isn't going to affect the story, okay? When I'm describing things so you know the setting, when I'm putting hills and things in there, it's because I want to create certain moods, okay? As cleverer writers now, that's the things that we want to think of. So now we're going to start planning what it is that we are going to do. So we're going to work through our senses. So in the chat, we're going to start on uh, hearing, okay? We're going to start on the things that can hear. So she's walking up the hill, she's walking to the fair. Think of when you've been to the fair. Think about when you've seen fairs and films and fairs and videos and things like that. So hearing, what type of things is she going to be able to hear, okay? What type of things is she going to be able to hear? Pop them down in the chat there and we will put some up. So um, let's see if we've got any ideas in there. OK. Right now we're getting some description of things straight away. I thought we were going to have loads of things I was going to put up and we were going to start describing them later on. But I've also already got jubilant children oh where that one went from christian jubilant children um, screaming and running okay these are just my notes so i'm not having to put in a sentence screaming running now i see someone there putting about walking up to the creepy fair okay I heard a loud scream. That's creating, not creating a, a, a feeling of excitement and happiness, isn't it? So when we're thinking of the things that we are going to hear, yes, you could hear that if we're writing a different type of story. But we're writing about excitement and happiness. So what things are we going to put in there? OK, it's not going to create an atmosphere of happiness and excitement if we're talking about creepiness and things like that. OK, and we're describing the fair. What things can we hear? That's what we're looking for. Um, so people screaming on roller coasters. So I'm just going to put roller coaster or screaming there. Now, when you're screaming, obviously, we'll have to describe that to people like happy screaming on, on roller coasters and stuff like that as well. The same things there. Um, I put roller coasters because not just the screaming of people on the roller coasters and stuff as well. It could be the metal of the clanking. Um, metal clank as it's sort of going up, isn't it? As it's getting pulled up the uh, to the top of the drops and things like that. You always hear that clinking and things. Laughter, like that one, yeah, lots of laughter. That creates excitement, that creates happiness. Um, gates rattling, like could have a turnstile going in, joyful, right, um, right, um, joyful things, rusty old roller coaster. Remember, we're talking about the sounds, what is it she can hear, okay? We're not trying to describe the roller coaster or anything there, we're really breaking it down. We're going to look at all the different things. Okay, now when we get into it, we'll start um, evolving them and putting those description in. We're just trying to think of those things. The music, yeah. If you think the music at the fair has them on, you have the people on the mics and scream if you want to go faster and all that jazz. Um, all those type of things. So we've got lots of things for here and there. So let's move on to the smells, okay. What type of things can she smell? Now remember as well. We are not just going to put in everything she can smell. Say, oh, she's in a field, so she might be able to smell cow pats, things like that. That's not going to create the atmosphere we want, is it? 
when we, like I said, we're putting everything in that we want to put in because it's going to help our story. So if we put in things that you can smell that aren't nice, that isn't creating that happiness, that isn't creating that excitement. So what are the things that you might be able to smell, okay, that are nice smells, that are excitement, that, that we link with happiness, that we obviously have at the fair as well. And that's the first one I thought of that someone's put in. Who was that one? Went in straight away. Caitlin Donuts. Yeah, straight away, donuts. Fresh burgers. Okay, they smell different, don't they? Because they're getting fried there in front of you and things like that. Uh, candy floss. Popcorn. Fish and chips, yeah, could be, could be a nice smell that we have there. You can smell the onions frying. Hot dogs, candy floss. So we're all thinking of those... Um, the food thing that's the things I thought of what I also thought of as well um I'm gonna put in fresh cut grass because it's on a field isn't it and that's a lovely smell well for most people it's a lovely lovely smell that fresh cut grass because it might have been cut just before they come in because I all I was thinking of was food and I thought I was just hungry when I was thinking of those things so I thought right what other smells and obviously because I'm trying to think of good smells in a field that fresh cut uh grass that we're gonna put on there so we've got some great things there for the smell. Now, next one is going to be a harder one because we're going to put taste. Now, before you all go into the chat and start writing things for taste and you start putting these same things, okay, remember, we are not going any further than this idea, okay? So she walked to the fair. She hasn't got there. She hasn't started to eat. So what things might you be able to taste? And this is the one that I thought was a little bit difficult, okay? Oh, I haven't lied. This is one I thought was a little bit difficult. I've only got a couple of things there, okay? Some of them were a little bit more clever and higher, and I was using sort of metaphors and similes. So see if you can think of any. Remember, she's not eating anything, so if we can't have the donuts, they, they will be brilliant. And when we do this, okay, for this example, we are going to try and put some of each of the senses in. But when we, when you do this, don't always force, have force all the senses in. For, put the ones in that are best and describe it uh, the best. You might put, might not think of taste, okay? There's certain ones that we can't use all the time. But I'm going to put it in just to show you how we can. Um, but don't feel like you have to force it always in or it's not going to be a good... Oh, that's a great one for you. I've got one similar to that, but this one's better, so I'm going to do that. So taste the anticipation. So that's a brilliant one there for you. Taste the anticipation. If it was raining, we could have some the water. She can taste the donuts um, moments away from her. So I'm going to put... Um, That's the one I didn't think of as well. I'm going to put future tastes there because it could be the popcorn. So she can smell those burgers, she can smell those donuts, and she can taste them already. Okay, that type of thing that we're seeing. So we're using that sense, but you'll know that feeling when you can smell some food and you, mm, you can remember that taste in your mouth already, okay? And um, this is making me really hungry. I haven't had my breakfast yet. Uh, should have. The lush donuts, so you can taste them, them in the air. So I had, we had the anticipation. I had so you could taste the excitement in the air, okay, or in the food in the air. So those are the couple there that I'm going to stick with, and we we'll probably end up using when we go through. Um, next one, du, 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 another color. Let's go with touch. Okay, what can she feel? Okay, when she's walking around, when she. Just walk around at all so it's not someone else's hand. Have a think what she might be able to feel. Now, this is where I might start having to think of maybe the claws, okay? What she's walking on, those type of things. Again, this one isn't going to be as much as what you can hear and smell, isn't it? This is certain situations. This one, the hear and the smell, and then when we see the fair, okay, in a little bit, those are the ones that are going to be key for us, aren't they? Those are the ones that are going to be really exciting in this piece of writing. But we can still put a couple of these in, and I'm going to put them in to show us, but you might not. You might focus on those other things. Breeze, okay? So she can feel the breeze. Remember, we're thinking of excitement, and we're thinking of happiness. 
those type of things, aren't we? So we're not going to say, oh, she can feel the rain pouring down and things like that. We're picking that a nice warm breeze we will probably be describing when we have a look there. I'm just making sure, okay. Um, the grass. Grass on her ankle, so she might be wearing sandals or something like that, so she can feel the, 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 the grass sort of on her feet and uh, things like that. Brilliant. Um, we've got now, we're starting to think outside the box as clever writers. Shiver down her spine, a shiver of excitement, so I've got shiver in there. I saw another one earlier on, but it's going really, really quickly because you've all got some brilliant ones. Butterflies in her tummy. Brilliant one, that one. Oh, I lost my feed. Yep, yeah, um, warm sunset upon her. Oh, of course, it could be a sunset. I think that's a great time that we're going to set at that dusk because that's a lovely time, isn't it? Um, so she can feel the warm sun as it's going. Um, so I'm going to put the sunset there. That's a brilliant one. Goosebumps. Do you know what it is? There's too many ideas, really good ideas for me to put down here. The wind flowing through her hair. they are brilliant. Um, well done, Sev, with the sunset. Dew, the blades of grass. Um, Chloe, she can feel a ship. I uh, mentioned the shiver. Um, Chloe mentioned the butterflies as well. Freya, the sun beaming down. Goosebumps on her arm, Melissa. Brilliant. Really good ideas there. Loads more than I was thinking. I'm just going to leave those ones for now. And we're moving on to our last sense. One, two, three, four. Um, so our last sense is what you can see. So what we're going to see now is she has i'll put more of this side because i know we can't see the little part of the board so we'll keep the flexion off okay so what you can see so let's think she's got to the top of the hill okay she's got to the top of the hill and she can now see the fair okay but i'm not just going to say she was at the top of the hill she could now see the fair am i okay we're not going to use all these descriptions and then just use that one Okay, so how are we going to describe it? What things can we see? What's going to create the excitement and happiness? What, put your great thing to do when you're writing it. If it's something that you can write about because it's something you know, something you've seen, take yourself back to that point. Last time you were walking to the fair, um, let's say it's sunset. Uh, we might say sunset, we might not, we might say have it at night. But I thought I was thinking, uh, when we see, see the fair, it is going to be dark. Okay, because when I'm thinking of the fair, and I'm thinking of that excitement, it builds up more when I think of it at uh, the darkness. Uh, when I'm thinking of things like um, firework night and things like that, that's the times that I'm normally going to a fair um, where I'm really, really excited. What is it that makes you, when you see that fair, what is it that really, really starts that excitement to start to grow in you? Okay. Oh, well done, Eleanor. A really abstract one there. Joy. So she can see the joy in people as she gets there. Um, bright neon lights. Who was that one? Bright neon lights. See the roller coaster, people cheering, buying things. So the people, um, crowds here. Okay. Now, crowds can be a good thing and a bad thing, can't it? I say, oh, you go to the shop mall, there was loads of crowds, it's a bad thing. But it depends how we describe the crowd, and we look at that when we get to it, is to make it a good thing, okay? A boy who flips his hair in the wind. Lovely. Uh, flashing lights, so I've got plan. Uh, flashing. Spark of hope in children's eyes. I'm putting that down because that is a brilliant idea. Spark of hope. Um, you just must see it, gentle children. I know what that means. Ooh, good word there, Mrs. Carthy. I knew she she always gets involved. She can't keep her ideas because she loves writing. Twinkling, I like that light, so I've got that down. Lights flashing catch your eyes. I'm gonna put uh, bright colours. I'm not seeing anyone mention that. If you have in the chat, I apologise. But think of all those bright colours, isn't it? It's not a dull thing. It's not going to be um, loads of greys and browns and blacks. It's going to be lots of bright colours, isn't it? Um, the bright neon lights. Someone just walked right there. We have been came through before. Colourful light, uh, rides gleaming in the sunlight. Okay. 
loads of brilliant ones there. So we have got absolutely loads. Can you see now, we haven't even started, but look at all the notes that we have made just for this person walking to the fair. Now, as you start to do this more and more, you'll have, you have to make these notes probably less, okay? Because you'll get used to it and you'll get better. But when you're first starting out and you really want to make a really good piece, making these notes is what's going to help you. So now what we're going to do is we are going to write our piece that is more descriptive. Okay, I'm just going to section our notes off. We're going to write a piece that is more descriptive and use our notes to help us. Okay, different points I'm going to be asking you maybe to give me a hand with some ideas. So we're going to start the, um, uh, start it off and I'm going to have a look at a couple of the sense of someone introduce it okay so let's have a look um she started to climb the hill in front of her and again i'm using stronger verbs as well i'm not just using walked i'm using climb okay i'm using um as we're going on we're going to be used not trying to just use our simple walking um running seeing things like that we're going to use our stronger verbs because because they help us to build that picture as well so you start the climb of the hill in front of her. i'm going to have a look because you mentioned the grass there on um things you could feel didn't didn't we okay and also mentioned smelling the freshly cut grass as well okay uh, now I'm going to put a semicolon because I'm going to put another main clause after this that's linked to it and still makes sense on its own. If you're not sure of semicolons, there's a video on my channel um, and we might go over it in a lesson in the future. Probably will, to be fair. Um, she started to climb the hill in front of her. She could smell its... It, sorry, was... Freshly cut and could feel the blades gently and adverbs in there, tickling her feet in her sandals. Okay, so I've used that idea. I haven't just said she can smell freshly cooked grass and she can feel freshly cooked grass, okay? You think of those ideas and think of how can we put it in that smart sentence there. So she could smell it was freshly cut. So she, I've mentioned the grass before. She started the, the, to climb the hill and she could smell that the hill was freshly cut um, and feel the blades, uh, the blades gently tickling her feet in her sandals. Okay, so again, look at how I've described the grass. I've said gently tickling. Again, I'm thinking of excitement and happiness. I'm not saying that the mm -hmm. grass is scratching her feet. I'm not saying that the grass is going to be annoying her or irritating her because that's not coming up with the same feeling, is it? So that's why I've used those ones. Now, I was going to get some more ideas for you as we're going through, but just look at the time. I don't want the lesson to run on too long. So I'm just going to use your brilliant ideas and sort of put them together look at the things that i am doing as i'm doing it okay now she's going to start hearing the um the, the fair first when we think of our senses you can always hear things um normally uh before you can smell them i would say so i'm going to go on hearing then i'm going to go on smelling so i'm going to think what's the good things okay um Now I'm thinking she's getting closer, so at first she can't hear the music and everything as well, but it's starting to get clearer, okay? So it's going to be muffled at first. So the muffled sound of um, of what, it's normally dance music, okay? So dance music became clearer with 
every footstep. Okay, so I've started to talk about with every footstep. As she's getting closer, that music's becoming louder and she can start to make it out now. It was just muffled at the start. Now she can start to hear it. So I've used my music there. Okay, now I'm going to start using that, um, the, the jubilant children, okay, screaming. Um, over the top of it. Okay, put an adverbial, so I use my comma. Over the top of it, she could, now I've already got a great description word. Someone said jubilant. She could hear, so I'm not just putting the, the screams or anything like that, I'm putting the jubilant uh, laughter and screams. Now, first I put children there, but I'm going to put up all ages because everyone loves the fair, don't they? So I'm going to adapt that idea as I'm going on with it. Um, of all ages. So on the top of it, she could hear the jubilant laughter and screams of all ages. Um, and I'm going to go on to smell. So, um, oh. suddenly, okay, and I'm going to mention the warm breeze. So, the warm breeze. That was caressing her cheek. Look at how I've described that. Oh, I have sorrow cheek instead of check. Um, how I've described the breeze is caressing her check. She can feel it on her face, okay? So not just the warm breeze, I'm starting to say how it's making her feel. That was caressing her cheek, um, brought with it. Now, at the smell at the minute, I'm just going to pick one and I'm going to pick the donuts. I think that's the one I smell the most when I go to the fair and the one I think that excites me the most. Okay. Brought with it. The. Um, ooh. We'll leave a little blank there. In the chat, can you put a way, uh, how can I describe the smell of the donuts? Okay. So I just need one adjective. Okay, so the something smell of donuts, okay, of fresh donuts. So there's something, I'm going to leave that blank for you. So there's something smell of fresh donuts. Okay, so I'll leave it a little bit and I'll have a look at the chat to see what word we've got in there for these uh, these fresh donuts, okay? The smell of fresh donuts. I'm gonna move over to this one. Now I really liked the, the spark of hope. So I'm gonna quickly mention that, okay? Around her, she could see the, um, I'll put, cause it's in multiple ones that the sparks of hope flicker in children's eyes. Okay. Mouth watering, I like that one. Um Mrs. Carthy's there said the sweet smell because she's using the alliteration. Good thought, Mrs. Carthy. Um, let's have a look. Delightfully sweet. Delicious, fresh, sweet. Okay. I'm um, going back. Sweet, delicious, sugary, fresh, delicious, fresh. Um, I'm going to use sweet and sugary. Uh, sweet, comma, sugary smell of fresh donuts. Around us, you could see the sparks of hope flickering in children's eyes. Now she's going to get to the top of the hill. Okay. So she reached the top of the hill. We need to get her there. She reached the top of the hill. 
and I'm going to use my favourite song at the minute. She reached the top of the hill. Can you tell? Let's have a guess. Can you see what song am I talking about? My favourite song at the minute. I played in the disco last week. Okay, she reached the top of the hill. What am I talking about? Just a little quiz question. What song am I going to be talking about? The fresh. She reached the top of the hill. She's going to see the the fair. What song am I talking about? That's my favourite song at the minute. No one get it. Too smart. Too clever. Too abstract. Over the hill. Not a song, Stephen. Well, probably is a song. Let's have a look. It's going to be Blinding Lights, obviously. She reached the top of the hill and Blinding Lights. Blinding, what have we got there? Uh, neon Lights. Blinding neon lights um, shone in the darkness. Shone in the darkness. Now, there are lots of things there that I've not used that I can mention when she's starting to go down to the hill and she gets there. But we're going to leave it there just for the timing of the lesson. Now, what I want you to do now is have a look at these two sentences our first one was she walked to the fair what has our character done in this sentence she is just walking to the fair there's nothing else happened she hasn't got there on the ride or anything like that but look at how many how much more detail how much more description we've included there how much more of an atmosphere the excitement of the characters and how they're feeling how we have created that just by thinking of our five senses and thinking, how can we show that rather than tell it? And we've created a great piece of writing that we haven't even finished. She hasn't got to the fair yet. She hasn't went down the hill. We haven't talked about these bright twinkling colours, the happy crowd. We haven't talked about the taste of anticipation that you can start here. I really wanted to put these tastes in, okay, but because of time I haven't got to it, but the, those were brilliant ideas. So as she started to walk down the hill, then she could taste the anticipation in the, the mouth, uh, in her mouth, and maybe she, she smells the, the, the fresh burgers and she can taste the juicy meat already before she's even there. All those ideas there, still she wouldn't be at the fair. And that's what great writers do, create that atmosphere. So everything we have put in there is to create that atmosphere. So we haven't put in things that aren't creating that excitement and that happiness, okay? Because we were going up the hill, We've created that anticipation as we were going, and that's what we are trying to look at today. And it's not what we've created, the piece of writing that we should take from this lesson. It's the skills that we've used to create that. So, your actual task for today is to do something really, really similar. Okay? In the description there, there is a link to a video. Now, the video is Titanium. It's a, a song by Div Gretta and Sia. And it's a music video. But all I want you to do is to watch up to 54 seconds. Now, up to 54 seconds, we could describe that in a simple sentence. Okay, as a boy stands up and walks out of school, but there's loads of destruction around him. Okay, if you haven't seen the video, just wait. You can watch it afterwards. Okay, let us tell you what the task is first. But watch that first 54 and you can see what I mean. I could say that and I've summarised and told you what has happened. But we're not going to want you to write that. We're going to write, want you to write in more creative. We're going to write, uh, want you to write more descriptive to really set the, 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 the atmosphere and to set the scene. So if you look at that, she walked to the fair, that could be a summary of what's happened in that sort of, if that was, we're going to write a chapter, isn't it? Okay. So that sentence I've said is a little bit of a summary of what you're going to write. Boy stands up and walks out of the school, but there's lots of destruction. Now, I need to tell you, what type of uh, feelings you need to do. So I'm going to write over a uh, not very good sentence here. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to put in there is the atmosphere you want to create is uh, maybe confusion. Confusion. And nervous. So confused and nervous uh, one. Use your five senses. Use the feelings of the character, okay? When we've got anticipation here and things like that, that's how the character's going to be feeling. Um, 
to create that confusion, that, that nervous sort of atmosphere of, of what is happening. Don't tell the reader what's happened, okay? The same as this one. You're not going to add what happened before or anything like that. You're not going to tell them because if you tell them, your reader is going to know, so they won't be able to feel confused. They won't want to know what's happened because you will have already told them. And what you're, you're re making your reader want to know what's happened and read on is what you try to do to make books that people want to read, make stories that people want to read. So that's not important, okay? And it'll add, like I say, to the confusion of the reader as well. More detail, the better in there. This is a really time to let it shine. Watch the video, really look for all the little bits of things that you can describe, okay? Look at what the character's wearing, so maybe you can describe the wool scratching their head if they're wearing a hat, or the, 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 the weight of the bag on the back if they're carrying a bag, things like that. Um, now, you only have to write up basically to them, getting up and leaving, which happens in 54 seconds. If you really enjoy this piece of writing and you want to write further, obviously you can. Um, you're going to write in first person. So remember, first person is I will do this. I walk, I woke up. Um, I got up. I walked. Um, I did this. So it's in first person. And to help you on the Padlet, so on the link in the description below, on the Padlet, what I've done is I have created a, um, a planning sheet, okay? And in that planning sheet, it's got the five sensors on, it's got a picture from the thing, and you can do this same thing that we've done before you start writing, so you can get all those ideas down, and you can maybe expand them, okay? Um, and make them into a really descriptive piece of writing. So that is your task for today, okay? What you also need to do as well, um, is remember our first task. Remember, okay, if you, once you finish that one, remember the ideas you want for that story that we're all going to write together. I will post up about it, I'll put tweets up, up about it, but the more ideas we get in, the better story idea we can do, okay? So you don't have to do that today, it could be done, you can think of the ideas over the weekend, you can send me it before next lesson. Now, the uh, lessons next week are going to be slightly different because it's bank holiday on the Friday, so if you have a look on my Twitter and you have a look on my Facebook feed and all of those things, um, I will put a schedule up and I will pin it so you'll see what lessons. They are mainly staying the same. There is just my Friday lesson, which is this one, is going to have to move. Okay, so I will tell you where that lesson is moving to on there when it is completely confirmed. Now, again, work, send it to Mr. Biggins 103, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, send it on the Padlet, send it to the email address that's on the Padlet. If you need any help, you can pop it in the comments on the Padlet and the social media as well. There's lots of teachers here to help you, okay? So we've got all those things there to help you. Please, please, please send us those great ideas in. Please, please, please send us your amazing pieces of writing for this, okay? If you do it, obviously, on Word, you can email us a document or anything like that. If you write it down, you can obviously take a picture and you can send that, which a lot of people are doing as well. So, really good lesson today. We've got brilliant ideas. Some of these that came up blew my ideas out of the water, so it shows me that you have got those ideas we are just learning how to put them down on the piece of paper and um, that's the lesson for today uh, please remember please like the video if it helped you um, and you subscribe to keep up to date with all the less uh, all the lessons all the lessons now so there's about 12 hours worth of lessons from the last couple of weeks are up on youtube and with the work so you can get them if you want um, and a uh, big important thing school discord night five till six o'clock Hopefully see you all there where we can relax a little bit and enjoy it, okay? Um, I'm going to stay around, so if there's any questions or anything like that, you can ask. Uh, five, ten minutes or so, and then we'll end the stream. Thanks a lot for all your brilliant ideas this afternoon, uh, this morning, sorry. Thank you to the teachers for the moderating I saw, Miss Rice in there. So, so Miss Blakey, Miss Blakey, welcome to the chat. It's great to see you. Uh, Miss Cook, Miss Carthy, Miss Rice, I saw you all there. I'm not sure, Miss Allison, if you were there. Thank you, I didn't see you there. Okay, same as Donaldson, I didn't see you there, but if you were there, thank you very much, okay, for that. And uh, I will see you, hopefully tonight, where we can let loose. Oh yes, as well, remember, um, I'll try and connect with Sophie and Leah. Two TikToks that I will be doing, I'll put it on my Twitter and my socials when I've done those and you can come and laugh at me even more. Brilliant.
Right, okay guys, I'm going to leave the stream there. It looks like most people are going to get on with the tasks, answer any questions there were. Thanks again for coming along. If you're still there, remember, hopefully see you this afternoon at the Disco, 5 to 6 o'clock. Okay, um, and see in the chat, Sophie was there, so she has said that it is the Renegade uh, dance that I need to learn from TikTok. Just had a quick look at it there. It's going to be taking me a while, but I'll get that up as soon as I can. Thanks for that, Sophie. I'll get in contact with you earlier and we will sort out which dance or whatever it is she wants me to do on TikTok. Um, again, thanks again for the lesson and um, coming along and your brilliant work. If you need any help, contact on the socials, contact on the Padlet, contact on the email, loads of different ways. Comment in the video loads of different ways to get in contact with us um so hope you enjoyed the lesson i already did i love creative writing um and we hopefully see you at the disco and if not see you next week for our lessons then see you later